Hello. In this final session, we are going to be using some of the techniques from the previous sessions to explore expressive tonal drawings. Let's get started. In this first exercise, we're going to be looking at drawing from uh, a natural object. In my case, um, this twisty piece of dried um, seaweed, I think it is. Um, and what I'm going to be encouraging you to do is to exaggerate and play with the shapes. So these three drawings are all from this same object. Um, this one exaggerating its shapes, this one taking it even further, and this one becoming um, completely abstract. So you might decide that you want to stay fairly realistic, exaggerate a lot, or work abstractly. That's up to you. Here's another example underneath. working from rope, but exaggerating its twisting, uh, unravelling quality. You may be happy working with black and white, or you may decide you'd rather work with uh, a range of colours to create different tones. Here's a lovely example from a student from a few years ago, um, working from a sheep's skull using different uh, colours to roll around the tones. I'm going to talk you through the process step by step before demonstrating. So here's my object. Now I started by exploring it, trying to get to know it using a continuous line. It's a great way to get you focused and really look at the detail. And I've looked at it from a couple of different angles. And then I've tried to find a few words to describe the qualities that I find most interesting. So twisting, undulating, weaving qualities. And that's what I'm going to try and bring out in my drawings. You might find this sheet helpful to give you a start. You can always pause the screen if you want to look more carefully through those words. Anyway, following on from that, the first step was to sketch out the object. I'm just going to push it up very slightly so you can see all of it. Just to sketch out the object, exaggerating that curviness, those lovely bobbles at the bottom, the way it undulates and weaves around itself. Then apply, in this case, the dark tones, all of the dark areas. Um, don't forget, put a light from one angle or sit um, next to a window so your light is all coming from one angle and you'll see those tones much, much easier. And then putting on the light tones, blending it together, We're working those two tones into each other. Notice around the edge that sometimes there's a dark edge, sometimes there's a light edge. That's really important if you're going to make this look three-dimensional. So those are the steps. That was using charcoal and chalk. I'm going to have a go at, uh, at doing another drawing from this. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to try using... Um, white paint and marker pen. Okay, here goes. I've got myself a pencil, a marker pen, permanent marker, Sharpie type pen, um, some white emulsion paint on a lid, and I'm using a little bit of brown paper. You could use cardboard, uh, wrapping paper, anything that's got just a bit of uh, a texture, nothing too smooth. And my object is just out of view. But I'm thinking about the words that I said earlier, which were weaving, undulating, um, twisting. I'll start with that wonderful sort of grape-like knobbly head that this thing has. Sketching it out in the pencil and then looking at how it weaves. Trying to exaggerate that weaviness of it. I don't have to draw things in exactly the same place as I see them. I can be a little bit more creative with it. I can allow myself to play. I 
I'm using the object as a reference point for these sort of shapes. I'll make those bubbles bigger. Come on, exaggerate that much more. Playing around with it, trying to exaggerate those interesting shapes. I think I'll do to start with. And now I'm looking at my object and with my brush, I'm going to start with white paint and I'm looking for the areas where it's light. So I've got these sort of areas here. And it's kind of light in here. I'm catching that top edge there and catching all of these sort of top edges lightness sort of twisting around i've dried my white paint and uh, you may notice i've added some extra areas in i thought that looked a little bit empty i'm looking at the object and i'm getting inspiration from it i'm looking at the way the light falls on the object i'm looking at the shapes of the object but i'm not slavishly copying it um, drawing is about observing but not necessarily recording everything it's taking what you want um, from the object um, i'm working as i said with white paint and pen you could be working with charcoal and chalk or tipex or pencils the principle is the same Start, I'm started with light and I'll add dark. You could do it the other way around. You could start with dark and add light. So these are kind of spherical and I'm going to start to put on tone on the opposite side. So if I've got a crescent of white, I'll have a dot of black. Work its way out. More shadow in between, of course, just to emphasize through there. And not to make it too solid an outline around every single sphere so if it's a look too solid and start to look in again back at my object start to look where the lights and darks fall um, it's usually opposite the light there's a dark edge there's a kind of twisting coming through here much darker sort of edge. A bit of darkness there. It twists around. And There's my finished drawing. And before we move on to the next exercise, there's going to be a short slideshow of work by students doing this technique. See you in a minute. For our second exercise, we're going to be looking at using very strong shadow. Um, so I'm going to work from this photograph. Here are some examples to give you a feel of previous work. Using strong shadows, in this case using charcoal 
and chalk and a little bit of white paint ink charcoal chalk you may not want to do a face here's an example using similar techniques black paint charcoal chalk a little bit of white paint using very strong silhouetted shadow um, for the city just the odd highlight to emphasize the buildings but very kind of stormy look so i'm going to get myself set up the first step in doing this drawing is to get to know the image i'm working from so i'm going to do a preliminary drawing exploring um, this picture it's quite important to think about a little bit of planning beforehand uh, to work out how you're going to do it so i'm looking at the overall sort of shape box that the face would fit in and it's definitely a square so i'm going to draw myself a draw it a bit darker so you can see it draw a square on there and almost symmetrical straight down the middle Then looking at this, where are the eyes? They're about, mm, just around about that far down, about a third down. The nose is much further down, it's about there. And the mouth is about there. Looking again at this, I've ignored the ear by the way. The face kind of cuts in quite a lot around the side there and a lot in that side i can't see it even the eyes are kind of set at a bit of an angle you see if you go from one end to the other it's quite a steep angle one end to the other quite a steep angle there and then the eyebrows above oh i've done the eyes too low they should have been about there and the eyebrows above Okay, this is my preliminary drawing, just sort of setting out where everything roughly is. So that's where the eyes are and the eyebrows above. So I'm going to translate that onto another piece of paper now, ready for my study. So I've drawn this out larger so you can see it's a lot clearer i hope now starting with the eyes people often think of the eyes as being kind of almond shaped they sort of are i'm going to start with an almond shape but then notice that that curves actually really much steeper here curves around and then shallows and there's a little bit there it goes up flattens a little bit on the top and then curves quite strongly back down and the iris is a circle so my brows above and then the other eye much more in shadow so i'm going to have to guess a little bit Eyebrows curving over. The nose, a circle, two more circles, and a sort of channel. Just sort of seeing how that curves into the nostril. If it's on that side, I don't do that big enough. Make that nose a bit bigger. Fit into those big eyes there. Then the mouth, subtle curve in the middle. Filter them. My nose is very slightly too low, so I'm going to move it up in a second. 
I'll just um, double check everything else. There, made a couple of slight adjustments, dropped the eyes very slightly and sort of giving them a little bit more hooded sort of look. Move the nose up very slightly as well. When you're drawing, you can spend ages and ages measuring everything very carefully, or you can approximate it and then make adjustments. And that's certainly the way I prefer to do it. So I've got some black ink here. You might prefer to use um, black paint, or you could use charcoal, um, or black pastel, or black marker, or even just pencil. I'm going to start with all of that dark area. So we'll start with a bigger brush to start with, I think. And we've got this great sort of dark area coming down here, losing quite a bit of the nose. Just painting all that in dark. Just right in there, losing quite a bit of the eye too. You can hardly see the eye. Underneath, to just my pitch slightly. Okay. This paper is very slightly absorbent. It's quite nice. So blocking in. All of these really dark areas and there's a bit of the hair showing just there and then we've got the side of the face cutting in oops cut that in too far no mind we'll adjust that later that's over the eye the pupil comes all the way down the nose, quite hidden, just a bit of philtrum, a bit more darkness on the top lip, and underneath that eye. I've dried that off with a hairdryer a little bit and now I'm going to start to work on the highlights. I'm going to address this area as well because I got the shape wrong. I came in too much with the um, ink so I'm going to cut that back out a bit more. Just readjust it. Starting to work all of these sort of lighter areas. In the eye, that's a beautiful little reflection just there. And like this is around that cheek. And you can hopefully see that starting to take shape now. Oh, I've definitely done a face just a little bit long. That's a problem with having your paper flat in front of you. It's very easy to do that. I'm going to carry on working back into that now um, with a bit of charcoal. So I can work some sort of mid more mid tones in here a little bit. And here I want to start to give it a bit more sort of oomph and character. I'm 
<clears throat> so I like quite a scribbly mark. Use that there. Can emphasize certain bits as well. and get that sort of tone blending a bit on there. That one, that's what I wanted. We carry on with that for a little bit longer, but as you can see, the face is coming much, much clearer as I work in. What I want to do now is start to add a bit more character with my marks. And there is my final drawing. I hope you've enjoyed this course. Um, a short slideshow is going to come up next, showing you some examples followed by an important announcement. Bye-bye, have fun. If you've enjoyed this course, please fill in the feedback form on our website to help show our funders these courses are valuable. Details coming up now. Bye.